So I've picked a date and I'm all ready to check out with Stripe. So what's involved in this step? First, we need to create a new Stripe product named sponsorship. We need to create a new sponsor paid email template and email and then create uh, new callbacks on post.charge.sync to uh, send a notification and do a few other things. Now, um, this, this thing, this button is actually part of the, the checkout component included in the Vulkan payments package. So here we'll see how to set up that component. Okay, here we go. And here we have the, the pay component with our checkout. Now the first uh, property you'll notice here is the product key. And here's how products work in Vulkan. When you click complete payment, uh, you'll notice you have some information here. Uh, the, the name of the product, description, uh, you know, uh, amount, how much you need to pay. So this is all on the client, right? But then once we uh, process this on the server, we'll also need access to the same information. Uh, this is definitely not something where we can trust the client because then people could just enter any amount they want. So this means we need to access to the same information on both sides, and this is why we define a product. Here's how you do it. Add product sponsorship. Now you could pass just an object or you can pass a function to create a dynamic product. And this will come in super handy because, for example, uh, it lets us use uh, the title of the post as the description. Here you can see the, the title of the product is sidebar sponsorship, so that never changes, but the description here has the contents of the link. And this will also appear in Stripe, it will appear, you know, in, uh, in the email. So this is a really good way to add more uh, data to a product. And the, the price is also variable. So here what we're saying is if a sponsorship price has been defined, use that. If not, you default to uh, $950, the default price. And this is pretty cool because, um, so let's see how this works in practice. Here you can see in Stripe the price is $950, the default price, because I haven't you know, specified anything. But here if I go to my admin view and I do set a price here, let's say 500 and then come back and reload, you can now see it will say 500 So this is a really cool uh, feature of dynamic products. And of course, if you have any kind of e-commerce uh, site, then every product probably will have their own price. And so uh, this will come in handy. So we've covered products. Now let's go back to our code. Uh, the second property is an associated collection and then associated document. And this is because the way um, payments work in Vulkan when you complete the payment, this creates a charge and then it can optionally uh, modify and return uh, an associated document. So in this case, the document we want to modify is uh, the sponsored link, right? So what this will do is it will set it um, as uh, paid at equals to the date, uh, current date, and then also add the ID of the charge to the charge IDs array, which I, I talked about in the intro video. Um, so this is good. We can also pass charge properties. In this case, the title of the document and the URL of the document, in other words, the, the post. And what this will do is these uh, properties will appear in uh, Stripe. These will get sent as metadata on the charge. So this can be useful for yourself just to uh, get more information on each charge. Fragment is the fields we want to get uh, back from the operation. You know, whenever we specify uh, a return document in GraphQL, we also need to specify which fields we want to get back. And then finally, the button is just, you know, the button. 
Um, and that's all you need, really. Uh, based on that, you know, the checkout component will make the, the Stripe charge. It will pass the necessary information to the, the server and, you know, all, all the rest. So this is a really cool feature. It really saves a lot of time. You can basically have a, a payment button just with uh, a couple lines of React code as well as, yeah, a, a product here. So once this has happened, once the payment has gone through, um, we still need to do a couple of things. First, we have this uh, paid at property here. So that's not something that happens automatically. We have to set it. We can do that through a callback though. So here's a set post pay that callback. It's doing a couple more things. It's also setting sponsored to true and also unsetting sponsored candidate because once a post is sponsored, it's not a candidate anymore. Uh, you can do all of that using the set and unset mo Mongo modifiers. We have then a second callback. By the way, there's uh, having having one or two callbacks is exactly the same. Uh, it's just a bit cleaner to have uh, separate concerns and separate callbacks. So that's why. So yeah, our second callback also on posts.charge.async. And this callback is on posts.charge.sync. And then we have another one on posts.charge.async which sends the notification that a user has paid for a post, just uh, to confirm to themselves that everything went through all right. The difference between these two callbacks, by the way, uh, this one affects the modifier that will then be used to insert um, to, or rather to modify the document associated with the charge. So that's why we can add uh, properties and unset others. And this one just happens afterwards, after everything else has gone through. Uh, which is great for sending emails or doing other kinds of async tasks. So how do we create a notification? Well, we pass it the ID of the user to notify. In this case, the user uh, who owns the post. We pass it the name of the notification and then some data. And the name of the notification is also the name of the email. So what I mean by email is uh, in Vulkan, when you define an email, you give it a couple uh, properties. First, an email has a template. Um, second, it has a path. So this is used for testing. And I'm going to show you right now what that looks like. So if I go to uh, emails, this is part of the debug package, by the way. It's, uh, you have to enable it. So here I have all my registered emails, including um, sponsored paid, and I can either view the, the raw template. So this just gives you the raw HTML, or I can view what that email will look like uh, inside the Vulkan uh, email wrapper. So this is the, the email wrapper that gets generated by Vulkan's email system. So you can see below, actually, that's the, the data that gets inputted into the template. And above, you see the HTML output that will get sent uh, to the user. So here's a recap of all the, the post information and then a link to, uh, to your own profile where, where you can find your sponsored links. So in order to enable this, you need to do a couple things. First, you need to you know, define a template, like I said, the path where you can preview the email. Um, get test object is just a, a, a small function to get, you know, a, a, an object to test the email on. So in this case, it takes a post ID and then either returns the post corresponding to that ID or, or if none exist, uh, you know, it, it will return just some random post from the database subject we specify the subject and then get properties this is where we take the data and then we output you know properties with specific names and, and values so get properties is how you generate this object right here that will get then passed on to the template and so i've been talking about that template a lot here's where it lives sponsored paid 
uh, you can see where I'm using all the properties. So this is a handlebars template, by the way. Uh, I do need to register it as well with, um, oh, this should be actually a Vulkan email, something to fix later on. Uh, but yeah, at template here, I'm using it uh, with the path, sorry, this one. And uh, last piece of the puzzle, since this is a text asset, you do need to register it in your package.js. Uh, yeah, right there. So uh, once you've registered a template here, you've uh, regist registered it with Vulkan, and you've also created your email object with the template, the email and template are ready to use. And um, that's how when you call create notification with the name of the email, it will know how to send the email to the user. And it, you know, behind the scene, it, it will just assemble all the properties with the template and create the properly formatted HTML email. So there you go, that's the whole flow. Um, it's quite complex, you know, there's a multiple steps, multiple data loading, mutations, lots of stuff going on, but I think this is a really good example of what can be done with Vulkan. And when I say that, it's not really with Vulkan, like Vulkan uh, helps you, but really behind the scenes, it's all GraphQL and, and different APIs. Um, but the really cool part is Vulkan makes it easier to use these APIs. So I think that's a really valuable thing to understand how you can go beyond like the, the pre-made building blocks that Vulkan delivers and go um, one step further and build your own custom user flows. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. As usual, you can drop by our Slack chat room and uh, we'll do our best to help you.